Hello my friends, this is David C. Drake, the Golden Drake, and today begins my first full playthrough of the Elder Scrolls 1 Arena, slightly modded. The best techniques are passed on by the survivors, Gaiden Shinji, Blademaster, 1st Era, 947. For centuries, different factions battled in petty wars and border conflicts until in 2nd Era, 896, Tiber Septum crushed all those who opposed him and took control. Proclaiming himself as emperor, still the bitter years of war had its effect on the populace. The name Tamriel, elvish for dawn's beauty, seldom fell from anguished lips and was soon forgotten. In a place where life and death were different sides of the same coin tossed every day, the people of the known world began calling the land of their sorrow the Arena. Now, 389 years after Tiber Septon took control and kept the peace, the land of Arena has a new threat. The Emperor, Uriel Septon VII, celebrates his 43rd birthday, but jealous hearts desire the throne and plot his downfall. It is said that hope flies on death's wings. Prepare then, for as the Elder Scrolls foretold, it will be here that your adventure begins. And now we are ready to start a new game. Uh, this will be a full playthrough of the main quest, plus a few side quests, and I will be offering some tips, trivia, and game design analysis along the way. But before we get into all that, let's see the rest of the intro material and get into character creation. Uriel Septim VII, Emperor of Tamriel, stands with Talon, leader of the Imperial Guards. They have been summoned by Jagar Tharn, Imperial Battle Mage of the Empire, on rumors of treachery. The Emperor is betrayed. And transported to a dimension of Tharn's choosing. After months of preparation, Jagar Tharn takes the throne. Rhea Silmain, once Tharn's apprentice, is captured before she can warn the Elder Council of the Imperial Battle Mage's treachery. Manipulating the essence of magic, Tharn prepares to take the true Emperor's place as ruler of the known land. The Imperial Wizard wastes no time in gathering his servants, and turning them into twisted counterparts of the Imperial Guard. How do you wish to select your class? Generating the class can be kind of fun. They go through a list of uh, questions, and it's kind of cool. There are actually um, constellations of the mage, thief, and warrior that will glow brighter depending on how you answer each question. Um, but I already know what class I want, and so I'm going to go ahead and just select that. This time around, I'm going to play as a mage. And I say this time around because I have played Arena before. You know, I've dabbled in it a little bit here and there over the years. Uh, the first character I ever played as was a Breton Knight. Um, I have dabbled a little bit in some of the roguish characters as well. Uh, but this time around, I'm going to play as just a standard mage. What will be thy name, mage? Eärendil a name famous in the works of Tolkien. Choose thy gender, male. From where dost thou hail, Eärendil the mage? I hail from Somerset Isle. Thou hast chosen Somerset, land of the high elves. Wouldst thou accept this as thy home? Yes. Then thou wilt be known as the mage Eärendil, who wouldst call Somerset, land of the high elves, his home. Know ye this also, thy race is tall and stately, for thou art kings among princes. Thy people were first on this land to breathe the spring air, and first to leap nimble with the wind. Thine eyes can't see all, even when naught is out but the mistress of the night. Thy body and mind must be intelligent and willful, if thou art to succeed as a mage. Go ye now in peace. Let thy fate be written in the Elder Scrolls. All right. Distribute thy points as needed, keeping in mind the recommendations for thy chosen class. Okay, so we have 10 bonus points. This initial die roll that we basically had for our attributes, I think it doesn't look super great to me. Um, I'm gonna click done and then say reroll stats. 
Well, this is looking slightly better and we have more bonus points, so maybe I will stick with this. Let's get a bit more strength. I don't want to be that weak. And you can see how as we change these attributes, some of these values may change over here. Agility is extremely important in this game. Endurance matters a lot too, in terms of our base health and so forth. Well, I have some tough decisions to make now. I'm going to raise personality a little bit. Might as well be at least 50. Hmm. Might want to raise luck a tiny bit. That affects almost everything. Intelligence, of course, is important. Two more points. Hmm, this is tough. Okay, I guess for now, because we are, of course, a mage, I'll go ahead and double down on intelligence a little bit more and we'll call this good. Save stats. Thou will now choose thy appearance. Thy mien canst be altered by clicking thy face. When thou art finished, select done to enter the world of Tamriel, home of the arena. Okay, there's the face I want. Listen to me, there are no others left to carry on this fight. You have been left in this cell to die. Jagartharn, Imperial Battle, Mage of Tamriel, has taken on the guise of the true Emperor. He does not see you as a threat, being only a minor part of the Imperial Court. In that act of arrogance, he has made his first mistake. Look to the north wall of the cell. You will find a ruby key which will unlock the door. Take it, and make your escape. The passages here were once used by Tharn to hide treasures he had stolen from the Emperor's coffer. If you wish, you can gather enough to support yourself away from the Imperial seat. Be careful. There are many creatures which inhabit the sewers now. Vile rats and goblins. It is too late for me, for I am already dead. Only my powers as a sorceress keep me between this life and the next. That power, however, is waning. Do not succumb to greed, or you may find these tunnels to be your final resting place as well. I can still work my magic to a certain extent. If you travel west from this cell, then south, you will find a shift gate. It will transport you far enough from the center of the empire that you should be safe. If you survive these sewers, you will see me again. Remember, Tharn has taken on the guise of the Emperor. No one will gainsay his word for yours. I will come to you again in your dream, so it is imperative that you rest from time to time. In that way, I will be able to communicate with you and lend my aid. You are entering a dangerous arena, my friend. One in which the players are beings beyond your mortal comprehension. I do not envy your role. There is, however, a power within you, as yet untapped. Look for me when you have gained experience in the world. You are my last and best hope. All right. Well, here we are. In the Imperial Dungeons. And so the game truly begins. Oh. It says you cannot travel from here because I accidentally tried to open the world map. Let's open the local map. Imperial Dungeons. One of the fun things in this game is you can write on the map anywhere, so I'm going to write cell. This is my cell. And let's go ahead and save. Oh, while we're here, I also want to turn up the detail. What it means by detail really is view distance. And that matters especially when you're outside in the overworld and in cities and so forth. You know, the view distance within dungeons is always going to be somewhat limited, but anyway. So we'll have that set to maximum, and save our game. 
where on earth did this come from? That's strange. Arendil 1. You awaken to the drip of water from somewhere above. The cell walls are covered in slime, as are the chains which hang from above. Your eye, however, immediately goes to a strange ruby glint from the corner of your cell. All right. What is that ruby glint? It is this. You have found a ruby key. Now you will notice there is this kind of slow pixelation or dissolve effect on these text boxes, like when I click now, it dissolves away. Uh, I find that a little bit tiring because, you know, it makes, it makes those messages take a little bit longer. So you can hit F4 to turn off pixelation, as they call it. So that key was there. As for why the key was in here, you know, that could be some shenanigans from Rhea Silmain, who still has some power from beyond this realm to still affect things to some extent in this realm. You open door with a ruby key. So, before we venture out of our cell, let's go ahead and look at our equipment. Let's equip our dagger. Look at our spell book. Now we only know two spells currently. Basically, my concept for this character is that, as Rhea Silmain said, I was a minor member of the Imperial Court. And why was that the case? Well, my character is a very learned, very well-educated High Elf, and he has focused primarily on scholarship. Uh, he never had ambitions of becoming a great mage, a grand adventurer, anything else like that. So that's why he had not bothered learning, you know, a whole host of spells yet at this point. Uh, but now that fate uh, has kind of called on him to become a great adventurer and hero, uh, he will be uh, having to focus a lot more on his combat skills and his magical abilities. So he'll be learning a lot of spells as we progress through, through this game. So anyway, we have found some gold pieces, plate boots, plate helm. Now our character cannot wear any armor. They have strict rules about the different classes in this game. And one interesting thing we see here. Okay, we have plate boots in red. That's to show that I cannot equip it. Why is the plate helm in blue? Now it still says here, as you can see, mages cannot equip the side. So why is it blue? Well. The blue indicates either that it's made out of a very special material or that it's enchanted. So this will be worth a lot of money, a very valuable thing to sell. So even though we can't use items like that, when they're enchanted, they're going to be of great use to us. Mages in this game can use bucklers, but no other shields. And the only weapons they can use are daggers and staffs. The corridors here seem twisted and confusing, but Rhea's instructions were to go west then south to find the shift gate. So, so she created a shift gate that will take us out of the Imperial Dungeons, and it will take us back to our home province of Somerset Isle. Now, I am one of those who likes to fully explore the Imperial Dungeons before leaving, because as she said, <laughs> we killed our first goblin. As she said, there may be a lot of valuable treasure to find here. It seems safe to rest in these niches. You think the rats or other creatures may not smell you with a draft that runs so close to the floor. That is valuable advice. The game does give you a little bit of advice here and there, but not a whole lot of hand-holding, so if you ever choose to play this game, please do go to UESP, the unofficial Elder Scrolls Pages website, and do a lot of reading beforehand because a lot of your assumptions from previous, I shouldn't say previous, a lot of your assumptions from the later Elder Scrolls games will be wrong. One example of that already is the fact that there are strict uh, limitations 
for many of the classes. Whereas in all the recent Elder Scrolls games, you can choose to wear and use whatever you want, regardless of what class or concept you have for your character. This game was a bit more... a bit more aligned with Dungeons & Dragons mentality. So yeah, heavily influenced by Dungeons and & Dragons, and also Ultima Underworld, uh, various other tabletop and digital games. Um, one thing they do allow in this game that is generally not allowed in D&D games, uh, and which I do like quite a lot, is that if you find an enchanted item that you can use, and yet you haven't identified that enchanted item yet, well, you can go ahead and still use it, <laughs> even though you uh, don't know exactly what effects it may have. You can go ahead and wear it or wield it, and I like that a lot because I always thought the way that, well, the way that D&D has very strict class restrictions always annoyed me a little bit, and the way that D&D typically doesn't allow you to try using enchanted items or magic items um, that you have not identified. That always struck me as just terribly unrealistic as well. I love realism in games. That's one of the reasons why I'm absolutely in love with the Elder Scrolls series, is realism. The skittering of many tiny clock feet could be heard on the wet brownstones. Speaking of which, we have some rats. Okay. Where there's one, there's almost always another. And we heard it just a moment ago. Where are you, rat? There you are. And now you are no more. Perhaps we will try resting for the first time now. And let's go ahead and create another save. Save early, save often is extremely valuable advice for a lot of RPGs, especially old school RPGs, and especially this one. Very easy to die in this game. Here's another pile of loot, more gold, and a round shield we can't use. Now encumbrance will be... Oh! We've gained a level of experience. Okay. Six bonus points. Very nice. Uh, this is random. I think it ranges from, you know, roughly three to six, something like that. And so some sometimes folks who are really focused on making their character as good as possible, they will reload a recent save if they aren't satisfied with how many bonus points they get. Anyway, we were very lucky this time. And let's go ahead and put five of those into Endurance. You know, uh, frankly, I perhaps should have done that from the beginning. You know, I probably should have put all my early points into Endurance because as you can see here, uh, we get this health plus one. Um, I believe what that's referring to is how much additional health you will gain at each level up. So, yeah. So especially for a mage that tends to have low endurance, low strength. In particular, a high elf tends to have low endurance, low strength. Um, it will be valuable for us to, to boost that quite a bit whenever we can. Um, but I'm not terribly concerned about min-maxing my character, as they say. You know, I don't think it's good to obsess over that too much. Um, let's go ahead and put one more point into agility and call it good. And we might as well save again. Let's take a look at our map. As you can see, it automatically starts revealing things as you walk around. And sometimes it's a good idea to walk close to the walls 
so that it gets uh, the whole surrounding area. Sometimes you can see stuff through the walls. You know, this might be an example of being slightly unrealistic, but hey, I'm okay with some of that. <laughs> it's very helpful. And in particular, sometimes, you know, you see these red dots here. Those are doors, of course. Sometimes those will show up even when you can't see them in the game. In other words, it will reveal, the map will reveal secret doors. That is extremely useful. Um, now you could also just kind of go along and be testing every little square here, but that does get tiresome. So if you don't want to be doing that, you can just check your map every now and then, see if there are any doors that were hidden. Now we could also go do some swimming, take advantage of some of these waterways. I'm sure the water here in the Imperial Dungeons is a bit gross, but, uh, you know, sometimes an adventurer does what an adventurer's got to do. For now, though, ooh, red eyes seem to glitter at you from the darkness. Are we talking rat eyes or goblin eyes? I love all that flavor text that they add in this game. Newer games have more advanced graphics, of course, and for that reason, they've drifted more and more away from having text to describe things. And sometimes that's a bit of a loss, you know? There's a lot to be gained from textual descriptions and the power of your mind to expand upon what is seen, what is revealed by the graphics. You know, your imagination can fill in a lot of gaps, and especially when it's helped with nice flavor text like that. Three gold, a crystal, and a tower shield. So a crystal is a type of magic item that will have a certain number of charges. It is blue, indicating it's enchanted, but not yet, ident not yet identified. And as I said earlier, we can go ahead and use it, <laughs> you know, um, You'll see if I, if I click on it again, it goes to a lighter cyan. That means it's equipped. So now I could use it as a magical item. But since we have no idea what it will do, you know, hopefully it would be useful. Hopefully it would reveal uh, very obviously what its effect is the first time we use it. I don't think there's any significant danger, generally speaking. Um, but at the same time, I don't think, you know, I don't think we need to start using random magical items. Um, by the way, these plus nine numbers you see over here, these refer to our armor class. And in this game, again, typical of early D&D, we actually want this number to get lower. We want this number ideally to be a negative number. So this plus nine is a bad thing. I also wanted to mention Oh, while we were resting, some enemies appeared. I hear goblins. Yeah. I was about to say, as many of you are probably already aware, uh, the name Arena, which does admittedly seem, uh, you know, a bit odd, a bit misleading, perhaps even. Um, that name was originally chosen because this game was going to just be a kind of fantasy action game where you travel between different arenas, competing against different warriors. They eventually started adding more and more RPG elements as development continued. And when the time came that they finally realized, you know what, we just want to make a full-fledged RPG and kind of get away from this arena idea, well, by then, all the marketing materials and so forth had already been handled. A lot of money had already been, been invested in that name, so it was better for them to, to keep the name and just try to explain it away as best they could. Hence that story, which is not entirely implausible about uh, uh, the continent of Tamriel being so full of strife, so full of 
warfare and anguish and so forth that people just call it the arena, you know, that the world has become an arena to them. Anyway, let's try to rest again. I see you have strengthened your arm and your mind. It is time we began this journey. This is the Staff of Chaos, the one item that can open the door between this world and the dimension to which the Emperor has been banished. Tharn used this item to destroy my corporeal form when I tried to warn the Council. He knew that the Staff of Chaos was nigh indestructible, having been made from the essence of the land itself. But in that he found the key. As the land is split, so did he shatter the Staff into eight perfectly formed pieces. These he scattered across the realm. I have been able to divine the location of the first piece. A place called Sang Lair. It is said that Sang Lair was originally built by the dwarves of Kragan. Legend has it that a great worm drove the dwarves from their home in the dragon's teeth and took the lair for itself. I only wish I knew the exact location. Perhaps there are sages or scholars who would know of this place. Somewhere in its dank depths lies the first piece of the Staff of Chaos. I wish you well. I do not think Thar knows of your escape, but I can do little else in this form. I have tried to obscure your identity with a spell, but I do not know how well it will hide you. Take care, for Tharn may be searching. Go forth with the blessings of the true Emperor, and myself. Hmm. Okay. Well, as she said, she will be appearing to us now and then in our sleep. And that was a very useful dump of information. <laughs> so, now we know the basic layout of the plot of this game, right? And you could say it's simple. Frankly, that doesn't bother me too much. Uh, uh, I, I, I love just a good classic fantasy story like this. And you may have noticed that, uh, well, at least if you share my opinion, you may have noticed that there's a bit of a influence of Tolkien in, in some of the uh, decisions they made in terms of the writing, some of the plot points, you know, that little note about uh, that place built by dwarves that were driven out by a great worm at some point. Uh, there's a lot of influence of Tolkien, of course, in all of fantasy, and um, that also influenced Oh, by the way, up ahead, I believe we have a secret door being revealed here. Anyway, Tolkien's works influenced my choice of name here, Eärendil. I should have an umlaut above the A, but uh, I can't do that in this game. There's the secret door. And anyway, Eärendil, that's a name you might recognize from the books or the films. When Galadriel gives a file to, to uh, Frodo. She mentions that it contains the light of Eärendil's star. Eärendil was a half-elven mariner of great importance in the works of Tolkien, but uh, that's a story for another time. Kite shield and a longsword. Too bad I can only use daggers and staffs. But anyway, this Eärendil, of course, I'm not claiming, is the Tolkien Eärendil. This just happens to be an elf of the same name. A lot of the elven names in the Elder Scrolls series do have a Tolkien quality to them, so that's why I feel like it's fine to go ahead and just borrow a name directly from Tolkien's works. I mean, frankly, they actually do that here and there in the Elder Scrolls series. Um, uh, if we explore much of Somerset Isle, you might see shops that indicate the owner is named Gandalf or Sauron, even, things like that. Um, they don't actually have the name Eärendil, but they do have some similar ones. Let's check our map again. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to try to explore these dungeons thoroughly before leaving to take full advantage 
of all the gold and loot I can find. Ooh, we passed a secret door back there, that's fine. Oh. Combat in this game is very interesting. If you've ever played this or the original Daggerfall, then you know it involves holding the right mouse button and then moving the mouse, swinging the mouse in the directions in which you want your weapon to swing. So you can do forward thrusts, you can do diagonal slashes, downward slashes, horizontal slash, whoop, there we go, horizontal slashes, etc. And if I remember correctly, um, I don't think the different slashes make a huge difference. Actually, they might. I need to look that up again. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure if it makes a huge difference in this game or if that's primarily cosmetic. It might make a difference, and that difference, as you might expect, could be um, different whether we're talking about a sharp weapon or a blunt weapon. Anyway, I'll need to look into that. For now, I want to explore more of this middle area before I venture south, I think, so let's not do any more swimming for now. Try to jump over this. There we go. The controls in general are a little bit awkward by modern standards. There is a mod for remapping the keys, and so if the controls the default controls, if they bother you a lot, I do recommend trying out that mod. I have used it in the past. Now, I'm currently playing this game on Arch Linux. You can easily get this game running on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. And let's see here. Okay, I don't think there's anything important up there. Just more water. So we'll go south a little bit. Anyway, I mention these different operating systems because I want to say that I have gotten the keys remapped mod working before while playing this on Linux. Oh no, there's a goblin. You cannot use your weapons while you're swimming. So I prefer avoiding enemies <laughs> while swimming as much as possible. Um, because they can still hit you while you are in the water. If I can go up on this side. Okay, there we go. And it's a little bit awkward getting out of the water when there's an enemy right in front of you. Like, if they hit you while you're coming out, you'll just fall back into the water. Anyway, as I was saying, I have previously gotten that Keys Remapped mod to work in a Linux install of Arena. But most recently, when I tried again, it, it didn't seem to work. Um, it, it seemed, in fact, to cause some strange issues, like the game seemed uh, to be slowing down. It, seemed, it, it created some kind of bizarre issue. So I don't know whether that's because of some recent update to DOSBox, or specifically the Linux version of DOSBox, or something else. I might dig into that more deeply at some point. But for now, it doesn't matter to me too much. I'm perfectly content to use the original controls, janky as they are, because uh, they're not that bad. The game is still very much playable with its default controls. And speaking of which, I'm going to hit the letter C to cast a spell. And we're going to use Fire Dart. It will pause the game while you're choosing a spell. But once you've chosen it, it's not paused any longer. Like it says here, Fire Spell at Target. You need to choose a target, so here we go. I shouldn't say choose a target, I should say point at a target. Now I think we hit him, but it just wasn't enough to kill him. Now if I do shift C, I will recast the same spell. I might not really be hitting him. Sometimes the targeting can be a little tricky. Either I'm not hitting him or he has more HP than I thought. Oops. Yeah, I know, I kind of clicked to the side of him. 
little mistake there. Not enough spell points. Uh, I wasn't watching carefully, but yeah, I've used up all my spell points. Those will be recovered when, when I rest again. For now, let's go ahead and put our dagger to good use. Dang it. Come on, Arendil, you can do this. Good. Luckily, goblins and rats are not very tough enemies. So, even as a mage, I can handle them in hand-to-hand -hand combat pretty easily. Now, I talked about the Keys Remapped mod, which I am not currently using, but do recommend looking into. And by the way, previously when I did get it working on Linux, I had to do something different than what the instructions said. I did not put the files indicated in the root directory of the Arena game. I had to put them in a separate directory that was called DOSBox or DOSBox config, something like that. And then it worked for me in the past. Not sure why it hasn't been working for me lately. But uh, anyway, I am using a few other mods that just make minor cosmetic adjustments. And I've also changed a DOSBox setting that uh, makes a cosmetic change to the game. So, there are enemies nearby. Okay, so before I start fighting these enemies, I just want to finish what I was just talking about. If you look at all the pixels on the screen right now, things do look a little bit pixelated maybe, but you may have noticed it's not super pixely, okay? Now, the reason for that is I am using a special graphic scaler called ADVMAME2X. For most old games, I actually like the pixelated look that they have. I love that. This is one of those rare games where I actually kind of prefer adding an effect that smooths out the pixels a little bit. So that is something you can consider um, when you play this game. You could add ADVMAME2X as the scaler in your DOSBox config file, or if you're running this through Lutris, as I am on Linux, then you don't want to mess with the config file because those settings often get um, overruled by the Lutris settings. So within Lutris, you want to right click on the game, go to um, configure, and you'll be able to find under runner options, um, you'll see a, a, a place for where you can select different graphic scalers and you can test those out, see which one you prefer, or of course you can just stick with the default, which is normal 3X or normal 2X, one of those, and that's perfectly fine. Then you'll get the original experience, and there's a lot to be said for that. Um, like I said, that's generally my preference, but this is one of the rare exceptions where I really love the way it looks with the pixels smoothed out. I think it's great for this game. There's also an ADV MAME 3X. Ooh, a staff. And the 3X version is slightly different than the 2X version. I, I think the 2X version, I don't know, it, it just seemed to me like I kind of prefer it seemed a little bit better to me, and I think it also uses a bit less computational power, so there's that. I'll go ahead and use a staff for now, since we aren't wearing a buckler, I don't need to have my left arm free. In the future, though, I probably will stick with buckler and dagger as my main equipment. Let's look at our map again. Do we have any... Oh yeah! <laughs> Silly me, I'm back in this area that we already explored. One thing you'll notice in this game, if you go back and retread old ground, new enemies will spawn. And you'll sometimes hear, as we just heard, doors opening and closing. Enemies can and will open and close doors. Let's 
go ahead and go a little bit south. Anyway, so what are the mods I have installed? I installed a mod that's called Title Screen Fix. And it just has an alternate title screen image. Not a big deal, but the original title screen image uh, did have some flaws. And once I saw what this guy had done with their mod, I, I thought, you know what? Yeah, I, I do prefer their, their image. So I'll go ahead and, and uh, go ahead and replace that. And I also installed the opening fix mod and intro fix mods. Those two mods, they make changes to some of the text that we saw in the two different sort of intro scrolls when the game launched and when we started a new game. And I don't consider those changes to be necessary, okay? Like, it, it, you know, it's not that big of a deal to have um, some typos. You know, a, a couple of minor typos are not a big deal. Or a little bit of inconsistent lore or confusing <laughs> information. You know, I, I don't get too hung up on that kind of stuff. But I did decide for this video series, I might as well install those just to make those introductory texts better and more consistent with the lore. And when I say with the lore, I don't just mean the lore of later games, but I also mean internally consistent with this game's own lore. Like for example, I think one of those screens uh, had a typo where it accidentally said Uriel Septim the fourth, where it meant to say seventh. You know, there were a couple of minor errors like that. Not a huge deal, but I went ahead and installed those mods just for the heck of it. Oh my goodness, how many rats are down here? Oh yeah. Then there was... Oh boy, here we go. Five points, okay, that's respectable. Now I don't have to feel bad about not having saved in a while. Um, where are we going to put these five points? Endurance. Now, there is one other mod I installed, and this one is more important than the others. This mod is called Sound Patch. You can find all these mods at nexusmods.com. And the Sound Patch provides, it provides audio files that improve several of the sound effects in this game. So for example, the sound effect of swinging my weapon. Without that mod, there would be an extra kind of popping sound that goes with each swing. And that really is rather unfortunate. So yeah, I'm glad that someone made that sound patch mod greatly improve the audio experience of the game. Other than that, there are a few silly mods out there. Um, I think there are <laughs> I think there's a couple of mods that can change the appearance of Khajiit to make them look like Garfield or whatever else, and that's um, not only funny on the face of it, but also kind of interesting because in this game, and I think in Daggerfall as well, Khajiit were all still human-like in appearance and not cat-like. Which is not an issue lore-wise, because I think it's uh, it's still very much a given that there are humans living in elsewhere. But uh, but yeah, none of the cat-like races of elsewhere are available as playable characters or NPCs in this or in Daggerfall. If memory serves. There might be some exceptions in Daggerfall, perhaps. I'm not as experienced with Daggerfall, to be honest with you, but uh, I'm pretty sure that there aren't any cat like Khajiit in Daggerfall either.
Anyway, let's continue exploring. Oh yeah, if I run, if I'm running forward while I press the jump button, oops, <laughs> I should be able to just jump right over it. Ah, it's a little bit. Jumping controls are a little bit funky in this game. That's that's just an undeniable fact. Um, okay, let's go south a little bit here. And a little bit east. See what more treasure we can find and what more. <laughs> what additional enemies we can bash in with our staff. Okay. Goodbye, rats. Oh yeah, I need to remember to save more often. Oh, this is so bizarre. I have no idea why there was any text there. A Arendil 5. When we rested recently, as you may have noticed, our spell points recovered. You may have also noticed that the color of our health bar is green and our fatigue bar is red, opposite of what you see in later Elder Scrolls games. But not a big deal, you know. Might take a little bit of getting used to when you first start playing this game, but not a big deal. Nothing usable, huh? Come on, goblins, why aren't you carrying more loot for me? Okay. Let's finish exploring this area. Smash, smash. This game came out in 1994. They missed their original target date of December 93, so they missed out on a lot of Christmas sales. It came out in, I believe, March of 94, and initial sales were rather low, in large part due to the, you know, kind of uh, unfortunate uh, marketing situation they were in, where a lot of marketing materials had already been created and didn't always give the correct impression about the game or... or might have seemed confusing to some folks, might not have seemed as, as appealing as it otherwise would have because, you know, it, it didn't... it didn't give a full picture of what this game was all about in some cases. Uh, but... word of this game quickly spread. Its popularity grew very quickly and so sales picked up. It was considered a great success in the long run, uh, despite a rocky launch, and uh, continues to be a cult classic to this day. And on that note, I would say, if there's anyone out there who says, as some do, that, well, if you want to play some old school Elder Scrolls, just go with Daggerfall, specifically the Daggerfall Unity version, which is a wonderful rebuild of Daggerfall. Absolutely wonderful. I'm going to be starting a series uh, playing through Daggerfall Unity as well. But this game is also worth playing. It has a different flavor. It's not just a lesser Daggerfall or anything like that. You know, just as with Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim, they're not just greater or lesser versions of each other. They're all different. They all have kind of different pros and cons, different strengths and weaknesses. Uh, different sort of tone and flavor, etc. And they are all worth playing, and I include Arena in that. Arena is a very special game, and it can be very fun when you give it a chance. Now there might be aspects of it that don't appeal to you a whole lot, and um, admittedly, there are some people who claim that aspects of it uh, might get old or repetitive after a while. I mean, you know, you could say that about pretty much any RPG that you play for a long time. So I don't think there's 
uh, I don't think there's a whole lot to those criticisms. Overall, it really is a fun game with a lot of replay value, and it, it has its own very interesting and in some ways remarkably realistic world. Now, Daggerfall does have a lot of great innovations. There's no denying that. And, uh, and then Morrowind is my all-time favorite game. So not only my favorite Elder Scrolls game, but my, all, my, my favorite game of all time, uh, of any series, any genre, anything at all. So Morrowind is my absolute favorite, but I still have tons of love for Arena, Daggerfall, Oblivion, you know, to a lesser extent, but yes, I, I do have some love for Oblivion too, and Skyrim as well. You know, they're all great in different ways. By the way, I am definitely curious to hear your opinions, so please do tell me in the comment section, do you agree or disagree with any of these opinions I'm sharing? Um, if you have any extra tidbits to add regarding any trivia about this game or tips about how best to play this game, um, you know, anything about modding this game or how to get the most out of it, please do share. And There really is a lot to learn because, again, this is from the era of not holding your hand too much, not giving you a tutorial section, so to speak. So there's a lot of subtleties to the controls and game mechanics that you will not learn unless you discover it by experimentation or by carefully reading materials available to you. You know, like there is a manual for this game. There's also a guide called the Codex Scientia. And um, the Codex Scientia is definitely worth reading. Um, but you can also basically get all that information and more from the unofficial Elder Scrolls Pages website, uesp.net or whatever it is. I think it's .net. And so definitely look up UESP, read as many articles as you can stand to read about this game because there will be lots of tidbits in there. Um, you know, I've played this game off and on for several years now and I still am learning new bits of information now and then about things you can do in this game. It's, uh, there, there's a lot to this game. There's a lot more than, than some people give it credit for. And it really does offer quite a bit of depth and realism and fun. Let's look at our map again. Okay, I want to clear out a bit more of this area to the east. Okay. You can also learn about some interesting and sometimes amusing exploits in this game, just like many others. I usually don't like taking advantage of exploits. That's just typically not my style. I, I like to try to kind of keep things standard for the most part. Standard, realistic, and typically I don't do a lot of modding either. Um, it's only recently that I've started experimenting a bit more with mods, but I generally consider them Unnecessary, but they can be nice sometimes. There's no denying that. Okay. Let's go south a bit more. I hear goblins and I see treasure. Ooh, a daikatana. A torque. A torque is a type of item you wear. It's like a magical item, not armor. So I can take advantage of that. And typically what they will do is, typically they are magically enchanted to um, improve your armor class. A mark. Ah, uh, starting to get over encumbered. Time to drop some of my less valuable items. Now the mark in there is another type of magical item.
Now I'm trying to remember, I can click the drop button here, of course, but I think there's also a key I can press. I'm looking at my cheat sheet here. <laughs> um, hmm, I'm not seeing it. I think there is a key you can press to drop things, but whatever. Yes, drop the plate boots. You can right click on things to get descriptions of items and, and what their you know what their characteristics are. Let's drop this as well. What else do we have? Steel. Hmm. Let's take a look at this torque. Minus four to armor class. Nice. So even though this has not been identified, it does still let you just immediately see, okay, this is how much it will change your armor class. And, I mean, you would see that if you equipped it anyway, you know, so, whoops. So, but as for things like this mark and this crystal, you can see how many charges are left, but it will not tell you what the item will do when you use it. So use at your own risk, basically. Um, like if you were really desperate, then yeah, you could use these if you're deep into some difficult dungeon. And who knows, it might heal you, it might cast a fireball, could do any number of things. Probably not worth using if you don't know what it's going to do. And by the way, there are a lot of cool spell effects in this game. There are spells that will destroy walls, destroy floor tiles, create walls, create floor tiles, all kinds of things. There is even a levitation spell in this game, although you don't really get to move up. <laughs> You just sort of hover over the ground, and you can hover over lava, water, other things like that, so it can be very useful. It wasn't until the sequel to this game, Daggerfall, that you get the ability to fly upwards and climb upwards. I mean, there is a little bit of climbing in this game, of course. You can go down into little tunnels or into water water channels like we did before and climb out of them. But beyond that, you can't climb up other than just stepping onto higher platforms like this. Let's go ahead and save again. We see some water in front of us on the map. We don't see it here because the water is running underneath this section of wall. Now, where do I want to go? Well, let's go ahead and do some swimming and we'll swim under that wall into some new territory. Whoops. You can see we still have our cell marked there. There's usually not much reason to write on maps, but I still love that you can do that. That was an aspect of some of the RPGs of this era that I just find very enjoyable. Swimming will slowly drain our fatigue, the red bar here. But that happens pretty slowly. It's not too much of a risk. Of course, I may change my tune pretty soon, depending on how long we continue swimming here. But for now, we're doing okay. Okay, let's take a look here. Right, okay, so we want to continue south and then west. Like I said, please tell me in the comments what opinions you have about this game, about the Elder Scrolls series in general, about role-playing games in general, you know, any thoughts you want to share, anything at all, I want to hear from you. And of 
course, if you enjoyed the video, please do like it, subscribe to see more, etc., etc. I do also have a Patreon where you can support me if you wish at patreon.com slash the Drake. And in doing so, you can also gain access to my upcoming games, which are through the company I founded, Golden Drake Studios. I am slowly but surely making some games and I can't say exactly when they'll be completed, but slowly but surely they are coming along. One in particular, an action RPG called Adventures Unending. That's the main one I'm working on right now. Um, yeah, if you like my taste in RPGs and you want to be able to play <laughs> the games that I come out with in the future and also be involved in getting demo versions, influencing game design choices, etc., then please do become a patron at patreon.com slash the Drake. Another staff. It's always possible we could be extremely lucky and find an enchanted staff or an enchanted dagger or maybe an enchanted buckler. Those are the kinds of things I want to have for this character at some point. For sure. Let's take a look at what we've got so far. And let's go ahead and... Well, first I'll scroll down here. Okay, whoops. Did not mean to do that. By the way, things will wear down over time. Now, all of these still say condition new. This dagger says almost new. New, 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 new. Oh, we did get an enchanted longsword. I guess we had seen that before, but I hadn't really paid close attention to it. Um, anyway. Back to the game. Now, I think there are enemies nearby, so it's probably not going to let us rest. Yep, you can't camp. Enemies are nearby with three exclamation points. They're very serious about your inability to rest here. Enemy dead. Now, can I rest here? Oh yeah, you can also right-click on things to see descriptions of them sometimes, although, well, okay, maybe not. Goblin corpses. Nope, still can't set up camp. Okay. Fair enough. Uh -oh. Who's opening doors? Rats are opening doors. Rats, how are you capable of opening doors? More rats. Now can we rest? Nope. Okay, let's drop some more items. No room to drop here. Yeah, it's a little bit annoying, but yeah, sometimes you have to... Oh. Sometimes you have to make sure there aren't objects in the area. Gained a level of experience. How many points? Four? Eh. Oh well, I haven't saved recently enough for me to justify going back. Maybe we should pump up agility. Get some additional two hit and two defend bonuses there. Sure. Now let's drop some things. Let's 
Steel Helms, Round Shield, Kite Shield. Goodbye. Now which way to go? here a little bit. Well, maybe we should rest first. Enemies nearby, eh? Safe. Enemies nearby. Oh, hello there. This could be a bit more dangerous. Who are you? first human I've seen down here. Very glad I saved before resting. Ooh, we're gonna die. With you died our last hope for justice. Tharn is now free to do as he will. It saddens me to see the beautiful land of Camriel rotting from within. Goodbye. I wish you peace in the afterworld. Hmm. It's a nice death cutscene they have there, isn't it? I think this might actually be a good place for me to end this first video. So, as I said earlier, please do like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to see more, consider supporting me at patreon.com slash the drake, and regardless, thank you for watching, take good care of yourself, leave me a comment down below, and I'll see you next time.